It's just as truthful to say this video is all about counting files, even though it was supposed to be monochrome full motion video on an LCD. Uh, we could just say counting files. You could work out the frame rate yourself. It's just over 40, 324 frames. Um, and the length of this video plays for is in real time. But a video player with no audio is pretty easy. You just need a mass storage device to read an image from and then a display to write it to. So let's not make this about any particular project because the real detail is in making the video file. Starting with Panzoid online free video titling tool. Uh, let you swivel around, create objects which are text objects. You can have textured backgrounds and create a sequence most importantly. And after making a simple sequence I was happy with, I just captured that on screen with the Mac. Because Apple QuickTime will save in its own format and the next stage of this process requires an AVI file, I've used this Guru Soft Converter to convert to an AVI which happens when you select the profile for PlayStation 3. Now over to Windows with my AVIs, uh, the next program I've used is AVI Synth which doesn't have a GUI, it's run with scripts. The script I wrote will spit out numbered frames which are also automatically resized to 124 by 68. At this point even though my bitmaps are monochrome they are still actually 24 bit format bitmaps and they need to be converted to real 2 color monochrome. Sounds easy enough to use Microsoft Paint to load the bitmap image and then save it as a monochrome file. It's not so easy to automate Microsoft Paint, so I've used a Windows uh, VBS Send Keys script. This one here will open Notepad and make the window active and then iterate a bunch of numbers and type them into the screen. This is a similar way that I'm going to get a program to cycle through all the files in a folder. They're all numbered so that's very convenient. If I add a .bmp file extension to these numbers, they're already file names. This is a similar send keys script to control MS Paint and it's the one that's going to open up all the files. It just has some extra key combinations to use Windows shortcut keys. Bear in mind the send keys script never knows what it's doing. It doesn't know what uh, these numbers are for, what the keys are actually doing. Um, it just keeps going. If you manually close this program, the script can run away from you and start opening other things. It's also important to leave a little delay in between key presses that load and save things. At this point the microcontroller software could just load and display 324 bitmaps if the video player sucked. So next I'll prepare the bitmap files in the way that my program does outside of my program so that it doesn't have to do it. This program LCD Assistant is a free utility that prepares a monochrome bitmap uh, in a format that's friendly to the LCDs with vertically stacked bytes. They have uh, quite a silly system of the way their raster works. They don't draw pixels horizontally across the screen in a straight line. The LCD Assistant utility will also strip bitmap headers and leave us with raw data which is even more friendly uh, for our end application. But uh, it does output C human readable text files that are meant to be included in source and uh, they're all separate at this stage so I'm inserting the files in an automated fashion into a hex editor here uh, keeping on uh, appending file by file frame by frame until I have one huge text file. Now we've got one file for the whole video in probably the most useless format it's been so far where it takes a huge amount of information so I'm back on the Mac in Xcode running the iPhone simulator and it's going to strip out byte values and write raw byte values straight into a, a binary file that's uh, going to be read into the microcontroller. This is a bit of a generic template for Xcode that I use for a lot of things but at the moment uh, it spits out the file into a folder and then identifies that location so I can cut it out and paste it into the terminal program to locate it and there it is. So that's how to spend more than a day preparing a few seconds of video, but with the scripts written, what would happen if I tried it again? Well, I'd probably have some trouble finding content that was conducive for conversion to monochrome. This one's by Bridgehead Productions, I've got permission to use it, and it's available for free on YouTube. Uh, spinning Globe, uh, this is a seamless loop, so 
it's one round of a seamless loop and if you saw that lens flare there that's the bit that wrecks it in monochrome but other than that it turned out great now you can see there a comet takes out the earth and keeps going uh, just the earth just changed its trajectory and then there was also a uh, large nuclear detonation on a small island Boom.